back. This is for video 13 of the Blender 2.80 course. And this time I'm going to talk about render settings. As you probably have figured out by now, rendering is the final part of any visual 3D project. If you are doing 3D printing, you don't have to care about rendering because it doesn't help your print in any way. But for the most part, you will be doing stuff for other people to see. So you have to learn how to use these different uh, render engines and how to use these uh, render settings. Um, <clears throat> there's also a tab up here called rendering, which has pretty much everything that you want to have in a single place. But you And there's also a menu here that says render image, control F12, render animation, control F12, Render audio, which only takes the audio from the file if you have it and makes it into a file. And then you can see what you had uh, rendered here. But I usually go, I do all the stuff here in my layout tab. And uh, in here I can set everything I want the way I want to do it. So the difference between EV and Workbench is that Workbench is uh, really, really flat, doesn't have any shadows or anything. It's just for seeing how your objects are lined out against each other. I basically never use that. Um, Eevee then is very nice because it has colors and it has shadows. So if you rotate your stuff, you can actually see how it's going to be working for you. And if you add a light, Let's grab a quick copy of that with Shift D and place it here and turn it down a little. Make it into a 200 watt thingy. Yeah, that looks nice. Uh, but even with EV, you don't get everything. You get a lightning fast, real colored render, but it doesn't have everything that you can have. For example, this ball here, or sphere, is actually glass which can only be seen when you go to cycles rendering. There are some settings to each of these that I should explain. Uh, for example, in the sampling part, you can see the render 64 viewport 16 samples. That is basically the quality of your, uh, of your samples per pixel. So the higher they are, the nicer your actual render is going to be. If we take this down to like two, it is uh, rather crude. And then you can take this down if you want to make your renders even faster. But 16 and 2 are fine for this, this part here. Now, ambient occlusions and all of this stuff here is pretty much uh, out of the scope of this course. And if you want to create, make really, really great uh, renders, then of course you have to learn how to use all of this, but I'm not going to cover this because I, I don't use this in my work much at all. Um, the thing is that when you turn on cycles from here, you can actually see a, another thing here called feature set. Support it means that uh, cycles is working with a set of features that are known to work. But if you want to go into experimental, you may get some really fancy, swanky <laughs> new uh, tools to your disposal, but you also may crash your blender much, much more easily. So I tend to stick with supported. And if you have a GPU that you can use, most like NVIDIA uh, cards, or you have a CUDA, capable device, then you can turn on GPU compute from here, and that should give you uh, faster renders. But since I don't have a, a dedicated card in here, I can't turn it on. Open shading language is, is yet another thing that you can see here. If you go to your system, you can have CUDA, but I don't have any of those. I have none of these, and I don't have any open, open um, CL compatible GPU. So I will be doing nothing. I'll be just doing the uh, CPU processing. But if you have a powerful GPU, uh, you turn it on here. Now, <clears throat> the sampling here, 
means how many times your things are recalculated when you move your when you move your um, objects calculates them again and it takes a, quite a long time to do the sampling because again I don't have a fast uh, GPU here but what they had here previously is just fine 32 and 128 per uh, square again down here you have a set of stuff that is out of this course but you may want to look into if you want to get the quality to be perfect here on the other hand you can set the resolution of your picture this is HD 1920 by 1080 pixels and the, and the uh, percentage here means the resolution if you put that down to 20 and then you hit F12 you will get a complete picture but it is one-fifth of the actual size but it will also take about one-fifth of the time it takes to render at 100 percent so this is one useful option that you may want to check when you're doing your, your work so this is an actual picture from cycles but as you can see <coughs> sorry as you can see the quality is, is not perfect um, <coughs> There is another thing here that you want to look into. I'll turn that back up to 100. Uh, render region. If you are, if you want to see how this part is going to work in the render, you can go to your view menu, view regions, select a render region, and then pick just the part that you want to see rendered. And now when I hit F12, it gives me a full size 100% uh, render but it's only about that one little part. So it's going to be much faster to check these individual bits and pieces here that you want to see. <clears throat> if you want to see how a part of your render is going to turn out. So now it's already done for this part <coughs> of the render. And to clear this up, you go back to view, regions, clear, render, region. Now, <clears throat> There's also other settings here that are useful for you, but you, you will get by using just the basic sets here. And if you want to uh, know how to get rid of the fireflies, which are the colored dots inside here, I'll, I'll show you a nice link. Uh, as always, if you want to have really high quality tutorials on any given subject in Blender, go to Blender Guru because he has all the best ones. And here you have seven ways of getting rid of fireflies once and for all. First of all, use bigger light sources, then use bigger shadow sizes, use multiple sampling, use filter glossy. All of this is explained here in your, um, in your tutorial. So... Go back to Blender Guru whenever you have any issues with Blender. Um, about the output then, uh, here where you set the, the size of this picture and the aspect ratio. If you are doing animation, then you need to set these so that they correspond to whatever animation you have made. This is your timeline here. And if I was if I was to make a really quick animation for only like a, you know, a couple of frames, like uh, moving this ball around, I could in here I could say insert a location rotation scale keyframe then go to frame number six and move the ball up here and do another keyframe with the i key location rotation scale and then i go here and i say it's only six frame animation i have to go back to some other render engine to see how it actually works so now if i'm in here and i click on, on this one it moves like so and in cycles it looks like this so you get the point it's no point using cycles here <clears throat> but let's let's make a let's do a let's do a quick setup here view align uh, view regions render region let's just take this part here 
And with this turned on, I go back to my settings and here I can see the, uh, the output folder. Uh, currently it's at C temp, and that's fine, I can put it there. And it's doing a PNG file with the A, which means the, the uh, uh, alpha data for you. So if you want to make things that are transparent, you have to have it on the RGB A, otherwise RGB is fine. 8 bit color depth and compression at there. So if I now let it render, it is going to take some time, but I'll show you how, what I get out of it. So I'll turn on the render and then I will pause the pause the um, recording for a while. I go to my renders, uh, and render animation here. And it starts to render and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, the rendering is now finished. And if I go back to a file manager window, I can see that this is frame one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can actually make an animation by hitting the keyboard here. Nice. <clears throat> so um, actually I was going to tell you one thing and it is that if you were going to do a really quick, just clear the region. If you were going to do an animation, it is always a good idea to first run your animation and output into PNG. And then when you have the actual images, import them into a new file called a video editing file. I won't save this because I don't need that. And in here you can say add image sequence from C TMP. All of these files are now here and here you have to set up the whatever um, aspect ratio we used to have in a moment and now we can scrub the animation in here and while we are here in this uh, video editing mode we can now turn on ffmpeg video or avi or avi raw but ffmpeg is actually pretty good just select rgb and if you want to have sound in it, you go to your video uh, audio codec, set it up as MP3, and now you can add sound to it in here. But this is slightly off the topic of this discourse. I just wanted to show you that when you do actual animation rendering, it is actually good to do it uh, into images first and then assemble the images here. It's it's uh, much less error prone and it's much less um, subject to uh, random crashes as animations tend to be. So I go back to the previous one. I can't go back to the previous one. I'll just go back to any other file and finish up in here. Well, I think I pretty much told you everything I wanted to say. Again, this is something that you have to fool around quite a lot with to uh, make sure that you get everything right. But it's also very much fun to figure out how it works and uh, to be able to get nice looking renders out of your, your own work. So, thank, thanks for watching.